Here's a friend that every alpinist knows, the rock rabbit, or little chief hare, sometimes called a pika. Hungry little beggar, isn't it? See if you can do that with a straw. This is a, a true relative of the rabbits. So all summer long, he spends his life in eating and growing fat. And as soon as he's filled up his stomach, he gets busy as can be packing vegetation back into the great pile of rocks that is his home. He cuts off these little bits of green growing things. This fellow still is too hungry to think about it next winter. But as soon as he's satisfied himself today, he'll start making hay for the winter. And they literally do this, gathering great heaps of vegetation, piling it out in the sun, drying it, and then putting it back under the rocks for dry storage for the winter. Little round ears, the, the short-toed feet have hairy soles, which make them excellent for running around on cold winter rocks. How's that for jaw action? You watch his jaw when it, when it works. It goes round and round because the lower teeth are narrower than the, the lower jaw is narrower than the upper jaw. Well, it's spring again. And the whistling marmot comes out to have a look around. This fellow is about the size of a small dog. The piercing whistle. As soon as they spot any sort of danger, any prowling coyote or other predatory animal, they get up on top of the rocks and start this piercing whistle which warns all the marmots in the country the danger is about and puts them on the alert. See, this fellow's been warned and he's looking around to try and see where the danger lies. This is a, a large overgrown squirrel that lives in burrows in the ground. The biggest ones I've ever weighed weighed 30 pounds. Here's the cause of all the trouble. A wolverine. This is the largest and most powerful of the weasel family. He's a real bad actor. The trappers used to call him the glutton. Interest all around. As though the wolverine doesn't dig out marmots the way the bears do. And he's a, a dangerous enemy if, you catch, if he catches a marmot away from its burrow. So it pays to keep a good watch. Have you ever wondered what happens to all those frogs in the wintertime? Well, not very long ago, we thought we'd go out and see if we could show you just exactly what does happen to them. So off to an ice-bound pond where I knew frogs were abundant. Because down in the bottom of that pond, the frogs will be hibernating. That'll be a question of plain good luck if we manage to find one. Because there are a lot of acres of pond bottom and not too many frogs. But all you can do is scratch around in the mud because the frog will be buried in the mud, sleeping it off. So we'll see what we've got this time in the net. A very unlikely looking little creature, but here he is, a hibernating frog. Just as if he was dead. His internal machinery is only just ticking over, no more. Eyes close shut, we'll warm him up for a few moments. Well, he's still alive, all right, those eyes pop open. Let's have a look at that business again. <laughs> like putting up your periscope in a submarine. Poor little beggar, disturbed in his winter sleep, put back into that almost frozen water. He's so cold he can hardly move. With a little urging, very slowly he swims off down to the bottom again. And it's near enough to spring that he won't perish because he's not buried in the mud. And that then is the way the frogs and the other creatures that can't control their temperatures pass the winter. <laughs>